morning, everyone. Here we are in our everyday group again. Today we are with uh, Knut Arild Hanstadt, if I pronounce it uh, correctly. Scandinavian name. Uh, good day to you, uh, Knut. Uh, before we uh, start our conversation on, uh, on your topic, uh, could you please uh, introduce yourself, uh, where you come from and what have you done in your life uh, so far uh, and brought you to, uh, to the mission we are going to talk about in, uh, in a few seconds. Originally, yes, I am uh, a Norwegian. So I grew up in the middle of the country in a place of nowhere, so to say. So when I should uh, describe myself, I think I always have been a Renaissance being. Uh, all this wondering, what is this all about? Uh, and the first years, I think I was, um, I was quite of an outsider. So I know how it is to, to find my own way. So now I maybe will call myself a future pilgrim. Uh, always been really a searcher of, of the, the big questions in life, um, how it should affect me. Um, so I studied uh, pedagogy, uh, media, and I worked uh, with marketing, worked in an advertising agency. Uh, I have run my own business since uh, 1990. Uh, and the later years, I've been living more or less in Italy because since I was uh, in the middle of my 20s, I knew that someday I would go to Italy and run and operate a center there. I didn't know at uh, that time what it should be. But now today we have found a place, a wonderful place in Tuscany, in the cradle of the first Renaissance. So I am then the, the founder uh, of Global Renaissance Society. Uh, and together with my co-creator, um, Harriet Fagerholm in Helsinki, we have now worked um, three years together uh, and then uh, come up with this, this uh, the, the concept and the vision of a global nation of future citizens. Okay. And, and you made a remark that immediately triggers me. You said you are living in the, in the heart of the first Renaissance. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a coincidence. Now, is it? Um, I know you, you are uh, uh, running uh, what you call the, the Global uh, Renaissance uh, Society. Um, I remember that uh, at school I learned about the first uh, Renaissance but I, I, to bring everybody uh, on speed, could you enlighten us what the first uh, Renaissance was about and why it was actually there? Uh, let me start then, uh, uh, because you know, um, back in 2000, about 2000, then, then I started to work on, on this more uh, consciously. Um, and I, I attended a, a master's degree in uh, management, uh, management consulting. Uh, and as a part of this, we studied the, the, the leadership of creativity in the first Renaissance. So we were in Florence, you know, when we, we, we read Dante, we read uh, Faust, and we had another perspective of it, and that fascinated me very well. So I said, yes, but we are living in a time that um, in, in many ways, in many respects, um, are similar to the first Renaissance. It was a lot of turbulence. Uh, and it, some people, scholars, they started to ask, uh, okay, um, the truth we are told, especially from the church, is it right? Is it really the, the whole truth? So then the humanism evolved, you know, and it started with Petrarca. He, he, he introduced this new way of thinking that we should really search for the truth, not just accept everything as, grant, as granted. Mm -hmm. So then you had the... Uh, one of the things, and that is interesting uh, when we relate it to our own time, that in, in the first Renaissance, the Constantinople, uh, when it was uh, occupied by the Ottomans, then the scholars, they had to move. So they moved, uh, among other places, into North it Italy. So they mm -hmm. spread the news and the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then they started, of course, to, 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 to put the human being in center. Uh, and not the church, not God as the, the, the uh, ultimate authority. So the first Renaissance is um, about freeing and liberating a new kind of creativity, a new faith in the human being. And 
uh, uh, American Italian professor. He he says that the first uh, project or the, the project of the first Renaissance was to go from the passive, more inwardly oriented uh, uh, medieval ages and the so-called dark ages to the more active. And that, okay, we will talk more about that later maybe, but what I see then is this uh, relationship between the passive and active. Mm-hmm. And the new Renaissance is to unite the passive and, and, and the active. Mm-hmm. All right. But I understand uh, what happened in the past, but I, I also remember that before we had a period of Renaissance, uh, we actually came out of the Dark Ages. So uh, looking at your uh, initiative right now, that could imply that we are currently coming from a new Dark Ages. Exactly. Uh, and, and you mentioned uh, that the dominant force back then was, let's define it as a, as a religious one. Um, how, did you, how would you define the current Dark Ages, if you want to uh, call it that way? Can you, can you, can you? Yeah, um, if we um, first mention about what is, what, what is happening, you know, it's, it was an altered consciousness, you know, it was a new kind of consciousness. Mm-hmm. And to, to uh, look into this new kind of consciousness, you always need to go into your shadow. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I think it was more about the external events. It was turbulence, it was wars, it was, and they understood that if they wanted to survive, they needed to collaborate, they needed to, to gather resources, because there were a lot of alliances and a lot of, you know, uh, conspiracies and so on. So it was more on the external. I think that in our time, the new Renaissance is about the inner landscapes. We do understand that we create the world with our attitudes, our values, and how we look at the world. So it's um, mostly about the change in our worldview. And the Dark Ages is that we have also divided the feminine from the masculine. Mm -hmm. We have have, uh, explored and we have developed a society that is mostly built on masculine principles. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think the, the, the Dark Ages now is that we don't see the whole. That's why we now see this new wave of feminine influence. So mm-hmm. we, have, we have suppressed the creativity. We have suppressed the, 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 what we call the shadow. Of the okay. shadow. Very often hiding, you know, the treasures. It's, it's, can it, can it, it's a reveal it's a, a, that I can, I really must, you know, my congratulations of actually seeing the, the parallel between Hundreds of years ago, right now, I can completely resonate on this one. I, I also have the feeling that there is more going on than um, just tangible things. I also have a, a feeling that, you know, that the energy is actually uh, changing around us. I, I can't, you know, I can't grab it, but I, I can actually feel it. I'm becoming a part of it. <laughs> you know that one. Um, we have a... a a couple of people that are watching us right now, and I always try to give some feedback uh, while we are uh, we, while we are on it. Um, first of all, everybody, I, I get a remark uh, from Claire Bachelor saying that you are uh, spot on with this uh, vision. Um, a lot of people say uh, hello to you. Um, I get a remark from uh, Colm who said, "When we understand what is really happening on the planet behind the." propaganda of the media. Uh, We are not, in my opinion, any different than in the Dark Ages. Uh, Extreme poverty, disease, war, manipulation, and that's who have become vessels for the banks and the powerful. So uh, there are some people who are fully agreeing with you uh, on on this uh, this vision. Um, The the energy is there. Um, The big question for me, and I guess the big question for you is, as well, is what do we do with it? What are we going to do? And that has been my concern for many, many years because you know many people now realize that we have a lot of knowledge. We have we have enough knowledge. Yeah. So the question now is why why don't we see more changes when we really have the knowledge? Mm-hmm. 
required for, for change or transformation, because I think what we are into now, the new renaissance, is about a transformation more than just a change. So when we talk about new organization forms and so on, you know, we talk about new structures, because this is, is a lot about um, the underlying structures, the infrastructures. Uh, as long as we don't, we don't understand the underlying uh, infrastructures, then we will create the same results as before. So we need to go in this, we need to look into our values, our, our attitudes, norms, uh, and, and see what are we serving. Are we okay. serving this new source of consciousness, which is all about uh, unity, it's about uh, everything is uh, interconnected, uh, it's about global collaboration, uh, and, and, and in our opinion, it's also then about how do we create some parallel with existing systems and structures because they don't they, they don't work any longer. So, yeah. how, so for me, this is mostly about system uh, ch change or transformation. Mm -hmm. And with the system transformation, we also will see that the, the structures, the institutions uh, will be replaced. Mm -hmm. uh, just one argument there uh, is that when people now talk about self-managing organizations, self-management, you know, then I said, okay. But if we try to introduce those uh, self-organization and self-management principles in existing organizations built on patriarchy and hierarchy, mm -hmm. and patriarchy and hierarchy is at the core of what we need to replace. You can't change something that should be replaced. Yeah. So that's the conclusion so far about that. Mm. Mm -hmm. I understand. I, I can relate to this one as well. Uh, my personal experience also tells me um, there are basically two. Uh, there are basically two ways to start a change. It is it is starting up something completely new that replaces the old one. Mm. And it's and it's uh, the second option is to start a change from within, mm. and then try to change the old. Mm. Uh, do you have any ideas uh, or any experience you want to share with us? What's the better option, or is or are both options fine with you? Uh, do you have a yeah on the pragmatic one? level? Uh, on the pragmatic level, I think that. Um, what we are called to do, because we are living in a transition, we are not totally in the old and we are not totally in the new. So we are in a transition. So we need to be bridges. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this is uh, also a question of how do we lead or guide this yeah. process? Mm -hmm. And I think that we need now, and that is our conclusion, that's why we now introduce a global United Nation. Because mm -hmm. I um, I was and we were in, in this process that okay we started what needs to be changed but then we realized no it, this is not a question as I say of, of changing it's a replacement it's something totally new uh, coming up so how do we do that on the practical level I think global collaboration with kind good spirits is the answer because yeah. I believe really that genuine create creativity is at the core of the new renaissance. That was what happened in the first renaissance. They yeah. woke up to a new kind of creativity. That is exactly what we are doing now. So we need to bridge the past and the future. Yeah, yeah I think that you know, when you look back at the, at the first renaissance, uh, um, and I think there is a parallel with what is happening today. Mm. Uh, when I take that perspective of, let's say, change management, the change mm. management perspective, mm. uh, I actually see a lot of, uh, new initiatives that are basically separate from the old world. Mm -hmm. And the old world is now uh, criticizing and trying to change the new world into their old paradigmas. And that is exactly what happened in the, in the first Renaissance. Mm -hmm. They tried to stop it. Um, and I can actually see that happening today. I see a lot of new initiatives which are actually uh, wonderful. And once they, you know, get bigger, like uh, uh, in the news today, there is a lot of uh, media coverage about uh, Bitcoin and, and blockchain technology. And then you see these old institutions try to do the same what the religious people they with, did with the Renaissance people. You mm -hmm. know, they try to block them and they try to criticize them and they try to do a, a bit of character murder on it. So the, I agree. There, are, I, I can see some some uh, some great 
parallels uh, going on. It's it's a it's an interesting way of uh, of looking at it. Uh, you open my mind actually, uh, Knut. So uh, it's it's working. Mm, uh, it's good. <laughs> it's working you know, because yeah, you you know that that I think that you know we have made science as a religion. Even if academics, they are more arguing with each other than any other group in the society. Yeah. So, so when we say, yeah, science has evidence for this or that, I say, yeah, but it, it seems to me that it's more like a religion. So a part of the dark ages is that we automatically believe that science is right whatsoever because we yeah. place it into our own reference uh, mm -hmm. framework. Yeah. Um, so the, the new is then, as I say, to how do we unite spirit and matter again? And I, I, I just to say, because we have left the spirit, because we look at the spirit as something religious. And yeah. then we provoke people, we talk about spiritual principles, universal cosmic principles and laws, and say, oh, this is religious. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. What are yeah. we taking out of the equation here? Yeah, the, the, the going, I see a lot of comments uh, coming in on our conversation, uh, Knut. I see uh, Deborah, our mutual friend, uh, commenting on it, that she, has, she says it, it's an excellent point, you know, that we're not changing the old from within, but we're building something new. So we will create a lot of tension about this, which is actually good. <laughs> uh, there's nothing, nothing wrong there. Um, uh, I get a comment that we, we have to hold on to the idea that the Renaissance did happen and that the idea of changing the planet uh, was an organic thing. Mm -hmm. uh, true evolution doesn't try to change the planet or humanity, it just changes where it is or what it is. I think that... It, it, I, I'm not sure um, what you will answer. I've, uh, well, I'm pretty sure what you will answer, but I'm going to answer you anyway. Is it an evolution or a revolution? <laughs> interesting, <laughs> very interesting, because um, if you look at the whole process, you know, if you look at the Arabic Spring, uh, for example, you know, mm -hmm. that's revolution, but it's revolution without direction. It's, it's not supported by transformative work. If right. we just react because of fear, because of anger, because of rage, because of injustice, whatsoever, it's a reaction and creation is to go into the transformative work that is required in order to let the revolution, because revolution, what is that? It's a crisis. It's an expression of crisis. And we know, many of us, that the revolution starts with a personal crisis. It can be an external event, or it can be on the inner, uh, inner level. But we feel this, uh, this extremely profound crisis. What the heck is going on? What can I do with this? And you don't have any, any uh, choice. You have yeah. to move into it. And that is what I see now with more and more people all over the world. There's enough. Yeah, for me. yeah. I, I agree. And I, I can see it as well. I, um, in all my work um, with people, mm -hmm. uh, helping them uh, to develop their business or helping them to, you know, in their lives, uh, I see a lot of people. Um, actually um, uh, losing connection with the current system and even on a level that they question their own identity in it. Mm, mm. And that's worrisome. Mm, mm. That's, you know, that's really worrisome. Yes. And um, I think that in the old days, we also, um, how do you say that? We also found a piece of our own identity by... Uh, becoming part of of uh, religious movements because it's very important to connect to something so you can you can build your own identity and, and you know feel part of the tribe or the community. Today, the the, the society has become so uh, individualistic that I see a lot of people having all kinds of trouble because they don't really connect with this system we have built together. But you know, we all build it together mm -hmm. and. Sure. and indeed are walking around with uh, a big question mark like and now what mm, exactly and um, now what um you know this is also been a long process for me and for us you know that we realize that uh, you know we have been through a very individualistic uh, processing now for, for for some years couple three decades at least you know 
Um, but then we realize that to be independent and to be an individualist is not the same as expressing our own unique talents because if we and when we express our unique talents and, and competences then we need a response from others because as i say okay maybe a bit provocative but money power and sex is relational currency mm -hmm. so whatsoever we do whatsoever we want but the problem is uh, is arising when the old system we want something you know and we, we we feel that something new is going on but when we go to the old in order to require or to ask for what we need then they don't serve us in that way so the yeah. old systems and organizations they don't serve the meaning and purpose the passion more and more people feel and of course this is a part of the new renaissance is that it comes from from the bottom up not from from the top of bottom because more and more people we will get uh, not just competence and knowledge but personal experiences so when the first renaissance was about awakening to a more general approach to human dignity and individuality uh, now it's to waken up the individual to the collective and that's why i call the collective individualist the collective individualist we know that we are a part of the whole and we then ask really ask for guidance, okay, where is my place and position in this whole? But again, what is this new whole? Yeah. That is the big question. What is this new whole? And then we need to be very pragmatic because if the answer is not in the whole, we need to create something new. It's a wonderful phrase, waking up the, the, the individual to the collective. Yes. I, I like that phrase because <laughs> it allows you as an individual person to take, you know, to become part of something bigger than you. Yeah. Uh, last week, uh, or actually this week, I saw a nice phrase coming by uh, in my timeline that uh, that happiness is basically um, getting involved in something that is way much bigger than you. Mm. And just dedicate your life on it. Mm. Uh, I think we both uh, uh, can agree on this one. Um, looking at your global uh, renaissance society initiative, what concrete actions are you actually taking to, to drive this movement? Well, let's start then with, again, um, the big transformative force here, I think. And that is the force from, uh, from, from consciousness uh, interpreted as knowledge. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of knowledge, so now we are moving towards energy. Mm -hmm. We need to learn and to distinguish, discriminate between what is what. So if we don't see and don't sense, and that is the new, and that is also very much more of the, the feminine qualities and talents so far and traditionally, you know. Mm -hmm. So we need another approach to how to relate. And that's why we have introduced now, as you say, conscious pairing, mm -hmm. conscious pairing, because mm -hmm. we know from research and from science that the most long lasting communities, they are built on a very strong bond between two persons. Okay, it may be obvious, but when we use this consciously, you know, mm -hmm. I start to ask, okay, who do I want to live with? Okay, on the romantic level, of course, that's the first uh, thought coming up. But the next is, how can I connect with professionals to recognize this energy? So yeah. we don't ask you for your background or CV. We ask you, how do we relate to each other? And that yeah. is what we have seen now. So more and more people are coming in because we say, ah, I'm coming home. I found my family. Yeah. Ah, wonderful. Yeah. Um, I understand. I understand what you're saying here. Um, meanwhile, the timeline is filling up with comments, so <laughs> we're we're touching people here um, about the knowledge. Um, I had some debates with people on that one as well because we live in this wonderful digital age. Hmm. So all the knowledge that we ever collected as a, as a human beings is actually you know digitalized and becoming available for us which of course is an enormous opportunity, but on the same moment, I also think that we need new leaders that actually give you know, perspective on all these knowledge out there. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I have learned one thing with, uh, 
working with people, and I'm, I'm just one of them. Uh, ask uh, five people to look at, uh, at something, it doesn't matter, a glass of water or uh, outside, and ask them what they actually see, they all five see something else. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. perception is also a, a human thing. So uh, I think we have a, a lot of challenge in there, and especially when you go to the, to the energetic level of it. Mm -hmm. um, in my last meetup with the everyday right here in Nice, uh, I could actually, I was stunned by the, uh, by the, by the, the electricity of the group. Mm -hmm. There is an enormous energy going on. Uh, I can actually feel it in my stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, it's beautiful. And um, I think that people are ready more than ever. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think that it's just uh, our Western perspective that we are ready more than ever, or do you really believe it's a global change? Uh, it's a challenge, I think, to integrate uh, global, we call it universal consciousness. I think we need to understand that uh, before we really can come up with practical solutions, also when it comes to leadership, we mm -hmm. need to understand this consciousness, it's in integrating all kinds of relations but now we start to listen to the energies you know so, so we um we search for people who are on the same energetic level and, yeah. and then we start to work so and this is very practical because we need now to uh, to develop our intuitive and emotional skills and intelligence and harriet my corporate she's really working with this and we call it joy of being um, it is then to reclaim because this is also what has happened you know, we give away our authority we let the welfare systems do things for us that we should take individual personal responsibility for so the new leadership is to first of all to take back our own leadership and then to say okay what this is about it's about our freedom it's our yeah. freedom to choose and it's about our own authority because yeah. before we have regained and reclaimed that then we will not be connected to the source. And if yeah. we talk about this inner source as, um, um, because I, I, I more and more, I, I work with this, I, I believe really that we have the same, um, the same source, you know, whatsoever we call it. So yeah. when we listen to the source within, or on the individual level, then we will automatically adapt to the whole as in nature. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I fully agree with you here, uh, Knut. And I, it's, a, it's a, I think we actually, as a society, that we, we indeed gave away the, the, the authority. We, we just gave it away. We just gave it away to institutions, to governments, to politicians, to uh, you name it. And, and, the mo and the next thing is that they do something with it. With it. We, we as a person do not like, but that also means that we need to take our own responsibility in that one and take it back. True. And, and not just only finger point at them. Mm -hmm. Because that not, that's going not to bring us anywhere. No. And this process of reactivating our own authority also means, for me at least, uh, that we need to take our own responsibility in again. We need to take action. And I think that every little movement out there, I always give this example of the mosquito, uh, you know, uh, try to sleep uh, in a room with a mosquito. Mm. So don't think that you are too small because you're actually, you know, it doesn't matter how big you are. Mm -hmm. I think it's more that how, how passionate you are and how authentic you are and how energetic you are mm. than something else. Mm. Do you agree on that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm so fascinated now uh, also by modern science. We could talk about the science, you know, about what is science and especially yeah. in that transitory uh, phase we are in now. So Lynn McTaggart, you know, they, they are, she has been doing a lot of research on intention to, to, to set intentions. To set an intention is both conscious, but it's also on the energetic level. We, we come together and she talks about the power of eight. So groups of eight coming together with the same intention and with the necessary required energy, uh, we, we, can, we can really do miracles. We can create miracles. Yeah. So, so, so this is also the practical. How do we create groups and teams? And we call it evolutionary teams. Okay. Group teams and evolutionary teams. We mm -hmm. have, then we need to understand that the consciousness behind this universal consciousness, 
course, and we need to have personal experiences because experiencing is a part of the new renaissance. It's not about knowledge and external authorities. It is to trust our inner guidance and, 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 and knowing. So that is also part of what I see we need to, to, to develop on the practical level. Um, because the educational system is totally out of, of the track here. It's, it leads us not into the future. And more and more people are talking about this. We know that. What's, what's, your, what's your perspective on, on the current educational system? Uh, well, I met um, uh, two professors in, in Eastern Europe some years ago, uh, and they worked with uh, almost the same uh, thinking as we are talking about now. Uh, and they, with their experience, uh, they, they realized that we need to start from scratch. The universities um, were not adapted, not aligned with the students' needs and what they really want. So I think it is starting from scratch. So we need to help each other to see what are the future competences or skills. And we know now that they are more the soft skills. Jack Ma in Davos, he talked about this, that man cannot compete with machine. So we need to focus more on the soft skills. And in a research they, they, they made now, and ask people, what do you think the future needs most of all? And it's not computerizing on and, and, and the technological. It is of empathy. It's about creativity, it's about curiosity, it's about compassion, and it's about critical thinking. And I think all these new terms, they are um, doing something with us because the language is extremely important, of course, and this dissemination of the new world you are, and how we integrate it. Yeah. But we need to start from scratch. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I agree, and I also think that the educational system uh, has been built um, to make all the knowledge and all the information out there um, accessible for people yeah because it, it was not accessible and and we needed actually you know libraries we needed schools uh, to actually you know make the knowledge accessible to us so we could learn uh, but we, we are in a different era now uh, mm. the knowledge is already out there uh, so again i made this remark i think really you need a new system where we where we change the old school system from giving access to knowledge to something else because the knowledge is already there exactly, uh, exactly. that's a big challenge it is um, but, but i think that now i'm optimistic you know because i see that more and more people and especially young people they do understand this so they develop technology in our platforms that we can use so uh, when we talk about the practical application here I think that we, what we need, and Peter uh, Diamandis in Singularity University is, is that, okay, uh, if we have, he said, people, uh, people, competence, uh, um, what is that, the third? Uh, oh, okay, and, and, and capital, you know, uh, technology and capital, then mm -hmm. we can do whatsoever. And I say, if we have creative people, because that is our perspective, how to unleash the inner creative genius within every human being. That is the start of a new educational system. How do we unleash the genuine creativity, not the creativity that the old systems are asking for? Because we now see that the direction the old society lead, leads us is then leading us to the edge of catastrophe. So yeah. of course we need to see, we need to unleash and to have the trust that when we reclaim, to say, the authority of, uh, and, and, and freedom and mm -hmm. use it to choose our own passion and purpose and to trust that in your guidance, yeah. then we will change. Then we will transform. Yeah, uh, yeah. and I, I also believe that I, I saw a comment uh, coming by from uh, Simon Cran. Hi, Simon. Um, uh, that we, we basically, we, need to, we need also need to learn how to listen again. Yes, yes. We need to listen. The funny thing is that the, last week uh, I suddenly realized that the word uh, listen is actually made out of the same letters as the word silent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the, it can't be a coincidence. Uh, there, is, there is so much noise out there, so I, I believe that we need to find a way to become a listener. So I to try uh, to put in every day uh, at least uh, to introduce the term a keynote or a key a listener mm -hmm. because it's very important that we that we listen to what all is happening what people have to share about that 
mm-hmm. and then try to find you know new ways of introducing something that actually replaces the old. Mm, so interesting um, philosophy. Yeah. To get some more uh, uh, comments, to share some comments with you, uh, Knut, on our conversation. Yeah. Uh, Harriet is, of course, uh, <laughs> reacting a lot. Uh, she, she agrees. And uh, um, how blindly we accept some statements without critical reflection. Mm. I think that's a beautiful f- phrase because I see it. But on the same moment, I also see um, we have done that f- for a very long time, but I think most people are opening their eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah and this is, you know, um, about the, how do we invite the creativity? And that is receptivity. If we want to see something new, we need to go into the silence. And I call this the creative chaos because we are afraid of chaos. So we don't understand that in a dualistic world, and I don't talk about in the negative way now, I talk about the polarities we are living with, we need to go into the space of polarities and contradictions and all this kind of stuff and, and learn to live with it. Mm. Now we have suppressed the one side. Yeah. So to be creative is to be totally open and to explore the unknown unknowns. And I know that from my own work because I, I, I write a lot. So that is my form of meditation mostly. And sometimes I don't understand where does it come from, but I just let it flow. You know? And many artists and authors and so on, they say that they have the same experience. That yeah. it's like they're downloading. And it's even scientists, they are talking about this now, you know, the collective intelligence, uh, even Akashic records, that, we, that there is um, a consciousness we can get access to if we listen, as you say. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I, I agree. Um, I see a, a remark coming by from uh, Catherine. She said, opposites are necessary for creativity. Yes, yes. Creative intention, I call it. It's yeah. creative tension. With all that tension, it would be extremely boring, both between men and women. That's why we burn out. There is no tension left. Yeah. And then we leave because we... We are all searching for that passion and that sharing of energy. So mm-hmm. when the energy is uh, um, uh, dissolved, it is, it's not there anymore, uh, then we start to search for that, um, for a new relationship instead. Yeah, you were talking about, uh, you were talking about uh, uh, energy and you were talking about feminine energy. So here we are, two men. <laughs> yeah. debating the, the feminine energy I think it's actually a good thing because I don't think it's a, meme, a female or a male thing uh, I think we all have male and feminine energy in us hmm. uh, what is your perspective on the definition on that feminine energy well again if we go back again to the, the chain from consciousness because consciousness is also uh, to structure things, to categorize things. So we put, it, uh, put each other in, in, in boxes. But when we come to energies, you, you just recognize something or not. So mm-hmm. when um, I listened to or attended a seminar or a course with, with a um, very nice uh, Danish woman, uh, she has worked a lot of this, and she said, we are many genders. We are many genders. Uh, um, related now to, to what, you, what you say, because we, um, when we come to the energetic level, then we start to play. It, it doesn't matter if you are man or woman or in the middle, because it's more about the whole rainbow of energetic exchanging. So when we start to listen, and that is really listening, because we listen to the energy. We are not just listening or uh, making our decisions and evaluations from what we see only, but we read energy. And that is what I have seen more and more in my own life too, that I read energy and said, wow, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so that is my perspective, that we start to play more and more whatsoever. Men, men, women, women, and we need all kinds of uh, um, let's see, play, play, playgrounds. You know, men, men and women, I have seen that many times now. That yeah. uh, sometimes we need to be only men because we have another language, another way of approaching life, and so on. You know, and women have, and then it creates something totally new when we come together. And today, this is totally imbalanced. That the feminine is overheard. 
Why do you say that? Yeah, look at the institutions, look at the, the structures of the organizations, look at how the, the, the masculine principles have created a society. So even women uh, who try to be uh, leaders or want to be leaders in, in organization lives and so on, they are forced to, to more or less, it, it's about to change now, but more or less they, they, they hand to operate on, on the men's uh, premises. Yeah. We can't do that anymore. The only way that this is the core of the whole new global renaissance is full equality between these feminine and masculine energies. It's like a, a totally open and the world is opening up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I complete, it's uh, very interesting what you're saying to right now. I've got about a million thoughts on this one. Uh, you, you said something like, uh, in, uh, no, let me put it in another perspective. I know I, like in the Netherlands and I think uh, in many more countries, there is always this debate going on that there need to be more women in the top of, uh, you know, the, the current, uh, you know, big companies. It's all about, you know, there is this glass ceiling and you want more women in there. When I say that to you, what do you think? Nonsense. And not because I don't want them to be there, but I say again, if we, uh, we are about to transform the, the system on a systemic level, this is, this is not true. Um, I, I need to, to quote uh, Harriet too, because you know, Dalai Lama has said that the, the, the salvation comes uh, from, from, from the Western women. And she, <laughs> she told me, no, 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 because that is to, 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 to give away. The responsibility against it. Oh, yeah, no, we need women to, to, to say the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, unless you say, wow, that's true. So um, I think that what we are talking about now, and we will see it more and more, we create small and flexible communities, and we start with pairing, this conscious pairing. We start to create teams, and that has been my main uh, approach for this for many years now, because I see that people are interested, and I'm totally finished with this interested in. We need to take the practical step, and that is the inner transformation, that we are willing to take the step that is required in order to create these new constellations. And when we do that, then we create small teams and we can start very small. We okay. don't suspect whatsoever can happen. And mm. then we create this as a global ecosystem. And I really believe in that. We, 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 we connect local initiatives and then we start to listen to each other and we start to find out how can we collaborate sometimes uh, some people are so individualistic and they are so uh, afraid of losing their, their their vision and and so on so they want to or they need to have their own their own time but on a spiritual level i have seen that many of us we have been working alone for years and years and years we have struggled we have battled we have feel like outsiders for so long time until we reach this uh, uh, crossroads and we realize now or never we need to collaborate. And I think mm -hmm. that is a, this critical point of change in the, the, the community building. Otherwise we will be individuals and we have our own experiences there. But the next step is to create new relationships. All right. Well, you're a man on a mission now, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> well, yes, it, it, it feels so. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, I admit it. Yeah, yeah, no, so do I. So, uh, and I, I believe firmly, by the way, in the point of, of collaboration. It's, I think it's very important when you want to make a change out there that we really start uh, connecting all these beautiful lightning dots out there. Um, which is basically one of the reasons I'm actually having this conversation with you right now. Because I think all these different initiatives from spiritual level to, 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 you know, to, to very concrete little steps making a change out there, uh, that, that's where the magic is. We need to inspire each other with all kinds of examples and all kinds of uh, philosophies that actually fuel um, that new system, if you even want to call it a system, uh, we would like to have, because system is probably not even the right word there. No, maybe not, but, uh, but still it's a flow. You know, when we talk about energy, it's uh, more like a flow. And uh, <laughs> I contemplate it here also, you know. Um, if, we, if you lift it up now and look at the world situation, it's so easy for people to, to get afraid, and they are, you know, 
uh, in uproar because of what is happening. And I said, when, when Trump uh, was elected, I said, okay, at last we have the axe in the system. If we have an axe, and that is what we see now. There is corruption, and it's revealed from me to, to the sports. It's, the, the newspapers are full of this greed, corruption, and the old systems. They are, so to say, uh, um, breaking up. So we see what is inside. And that is, that is um, necessary in a transformation, in a major transformation, because otherwise we will uh, continue to convince ourselves that, oh, okay, it will go over, you know? Oh, okay, oh, okay. Yeah. Once again, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wolf, wolf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I think now we need to, to look at it, not be afraid. And if we believe that the, the old system needs to, to, to change or to transform, then we need to focus on what is the new. And the media, they don't see this new. So no. what is going on now is that when we go together and come together and we create a public voice, so to say, you know, we, are, we create a, a, a critical mass of people who collaborate and co-create mm -hmm. on these new uh, premises, then something magical will happen, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think it's actually already happening. Yes. You know? Yes, I, 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 I can see it happening. It's all around me uh, this week. Uh, it's just a little example. Uh, together uh, with two ladies, uh, we came up by the idea of actually launching uh, blogging in Nice. Mm. Blogging is coming from Sweden. It means jogging, uh, jogging and, and while you are doing that, uh, just clean up some litter from the street. Um, I think these kind of initiatives are, um, th these are these, these little cells of just a couple of people bringing an awareness to your, to your little surrounding world around you. And I think the more and the more and the more we people are you know, joining up together to actually enable that, um, all these dots together will be the new change. So I think that the change is more like a cellular growth kind of yes. evolution mm -hmm. that it's, you know, then it's, it's not pyramid shaped, you know, it's not a rectangle, it's not a circle, it, it's just cellular organic, organic growth. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we need to find new leadership. I think we need to find new ways of actually enabling that. So I am challenging you, Knut, uh, just like myself, let's make every single mistake we can <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to find that one out. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah sorry. Uh, because, I, you know, I uh, co worked uh, in, at the conference. I worked together with uh, or invited um, um, a professor from Netherlands, Paul Iske. And he has his own Institute of Brilliant Failures. Yeah. Institute of Brilliant Failures. And that is exactly, uh, you know. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I just love it. So, so. Uh, I, but um, maybe a comment to what you say now, no? because this is what I really see, is first of all, we are all equals and we need to reclaim our own authority because otherwise we give away our authority uh, and decisions to, uh, the, to institutions that we know now, they are not the new leadership. Mm -hmm. So the new leadership uh, are coming more and more, but we need to, to, to come together. And it starts with the very, very small. Um, that's why I feel so relaxed. It's not just coming up there and go on the world stage, you know, and being a uh, front figure. It's more about building, as you say, this network, organic uh, growing, and be very conscious to learn conscious caring, because it's not as obvious as it seems. We need to learn how to consciously build small teams, small local groups, and then some of us will be more maybe a um, global voice and some the people, but we are all connected to the same source. Mm -hmm. That is the greatness when we discover our own inner greatness, mm -hmm. that we all are a voice in this transform transformative work. And that is just amazing, as I see, because then whosoever I meet, I, I see a, a greater genius. Mm -hmm. As long as they are willing themselves, and that is the... the, the yeah. Yeah, you need, to, you, make, you, you need to make a choice out there. Yes, yes. And that yeah. is the challenge today. Yeah, and, and a lot of people, I, I can imagine, you know, a lot of people are, are 
it, it can't be done or they have fears or the, or their their little structure of peers around them tells them you know ah oh, come on you know be realistic and uh, you know <laughs> uh, don't don't do that and just do your job and you know mm-hmm. be a good citizen uh, but I also believe that we are living in a in a different age now there is a professor in the Netherlands uh, uh, I actually uh, admire a lot he's been for years he's been running a show um in the uni- in a university in the netherlands teaching change teaching how, how to change and uh yeah, yes oh sorry he has this phrase uh which i actually love uh that he says we're not we're not living in an era of change we are changing era yeah this, i love that Mm-hmm. I think that is, that's a beautiful phrase of, uh, or a beautiful way of saying it. Um, Knut, we've been talking for almost an hour already. Oh, time flies uh, when we're having fun. Um, um, is there anything else you would like to, to show, uh, to, to, to tell us? Uh, now we are right here, anything forgotten or anything that comes to mind that you, I need to say this? No, I, um, but my, my conclusion is that we, we need to, to co-create from these new perspectives. That's why we also need to take some practical approaches to, to build these new communities. And I, I believe in small teams so we can earn money together because this is the, the biggest problem for many of us. We, we have battled for so many years because we believe in our vision and this new. But still, um, most people, and I can really feel the sorrow too for, them, for us all, this is this all that, that we have to struggle for money when we know that we are a part of the future and it should not be like that. So um, then to start to work together, you know, to, to change, we talk about the sharing economy, but if we share from a hierarchical structure, what is that? What is it the same hierarchy as we have seen over many of these new movements, uh, but to share uh, when we share with each other, with like-minded, because then I, can, I, I serve you. And I know that you are in the same in the same space as I am doing. So when we buy products and services from people who are in the old, then we we serve the old system. And I think we really need to go into this and to discuss how do we create this new yeah this new structures. But because it is really about the structure. I think that is a wonderful uh, closure. Could, I could have done it better. I would like you. I would like to thank you for this having this wonderful, open-minded conversation. I, I loved it. I can see from the enormous uh, number of comments in our timeline that a lot of people liked it. Feel free uh, to connect with everybody in every day. Uh, you are most welcome. Uh, secondly, I would like to ask you just uh, g- leave a comment uh, stating the URL of your website so people can uh, learn more about your. Uh, Mm-hmm. initiative uh, trying to get a, a second renaissance going in this world. Mm-hmm. Um, Knut, have a wonderful day. Thank have you a wonderful day, you too. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao.